Happy Wax Not Wednesday, everyone, and happy November. This is going out November 1st. How do we feel? Can I just say, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm one of those that I just love Christmas, that when Halloween is done, I'm just, I'm just in a better, I don't know, November for me is just, it's a good time. Okay, there are a few things on the list. So number one, there's something going on. Okay, I have three Latifolia Snow Queens. I showed one a few days ago in my normal plant tour video. There's one that I cut down. I was just grabbing it to assess it and a leaf just fell off. And this cutting only had one leaf or propagation or whatever. So I'm like, is the whole thing rotted? Is everything rotted? And so I just got assessed that Hoya chingongensis, the pa. I think I'm gonna put it in one of these planters. Repotting my Hoya hanye props because they're in a cup right now. Looking at my Hoya Matilde splash, the tendrils are everywhere. I gotta cut the green ones or the less splashy leaves just to maintain the splash in this specific planter. I'm gonna look at the propagations from last week. So Polynera Outer Variegated, Michele, and kind of talk about what I do the days following and it's been a week. So I'll just talk about what I expect to see, things that I would worry about. And then I think the last thing, I mean, this could go anywhere, but the last thing that I have here, Hoya Crassi Petsy Lots of Splash. The tendrils are going off. And so I'm just gonna pop a trellis and just clip the existing tendrils to the trellis. I'm gonna use the North Shore Tropicals Clear Acrylic Trellises. Whew, they're so beautiful. Um, And yeah, how exciting. So can I just say first, the leaves are starting to turn orange, yellow. And because I film here a lot, I always, oh my God, the slow zoom on this camera. I always get the view of this patch of trees. And like, obviously I notice the difference because I'm, here all the time but wow so i guess we'll start with i didn't okay. oh no i always forgot to zoom back out okay i want to look at the um the snow queen where the leaf just fell off i'll show you that one first and she wasn't doing anything i mean i did cut off the the green leaves this is it it looks oh see <laughs> that's literally what happened this morning so there are three in here. And so there's one with two leaves over here, one with one leaf, and then I don't know what happened with this one. So we're gonna take a look. Okay, already root system. It looks good. But again, there's two other cuttings in here. So maybe these are roots from the other two cuttings. Surface assessments, they feel fine, like both of these. And like this one felt fine too. So I'm wondering if it just, got too wet at the surface. And I know that goes against, you know, what I, what I say when it comes to propagating, but this one has been rooted for a while, so I haven't been keeping the water level too high. Yeah, see, it's still rooted, but I do want to get rid of it just because now it doesn't have any leaves. And when there's no leaves, it can't generate any energy to sustain this root system. And I know I'm gonna break so many. Yeah, I don't know what happened. These are healthy. They're actually healthy. I don't know if you, you can see, but just how hard it was to pull out, feeling the roots that are actually coming from this, this stem over here. So I'm not being fooled by potentially branches from the other two here. I'm feeling like right where the root starts on this plant and it is fine. I am gonna get rid of it. And then I might just put two in this planter. Yeah, I don't know what happened. So interesting. Um, so I'm unfortunately gonna have to say goodbye to this one, but can we appreciate a second the rootage on this one? Maybe, maybe I knocked it over. I don't know. Y'all know that I don't like disrupting root systems, but since we're doing it now and we're already in there, we already disturbed them, why don't we take a look? at these so this plant pushed out so many gross like look three fourths of the time it was green leaves a fourth of the time it was splashy leaves it pushed out so many anyhow root system's fantastic i'm probably gonna cut one one leaf which one which one let's do this one goodbye okay, so that's one the second one is still a little rooted so i'm not gonna pull it out completely but you can see the roots already look at that just beautiful. And the thing I was looking for was root rot. Um, it might have been just something that happened, like maybe I knocked it over. I'm just plugging the holes just so I don't fill these with pawn. Okay. 
take these out. Okay, and I just want to update you on the third one, I think, that I have. And this one, look at these young, splashy leaves. That is like so exciting, so incredible. There's a chance I might cut this leaf because she only has a little bit. Um, and funny enough, the leaf before that, which is that one, actually has more splash. So I'm gonna wait. <laughs> She's pushing out two uh, tendrils here. I might just clip them now. It's just so exciting, so fascinating. Okay, roots. I think I've showed this before. Okay, Hoya Matilde Splash, my girl. My, ooh, ooh. sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, you're looking really cute. Wow, okay, you're green, you gotta go, okay. <laughs> Again, I haven't really looked at this one recently. Ed, like evidently, like look at all of these tendrils coming from everywhere, so beautiful. Okay, so I already see one vine that's green that I'm gonna say goodbye to. So there's one over here. I think I may have showed this in another video, but, and I think I said that I was gonna wait for a new set of leaves. You can see that this, it's still green. So we're gonna chop her. The question is, where do you chop her? You chop her at the point right above the last splashy leaf. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're looking at this. Let's see, let's, ooh, the gloves, ooh. Oh my God, the best problem to have is like, Oh my God, where does this start? It's just such a full plant. Yeah, so it is coming from this green leaf, the rest of the green vine, which makes sense. I kept this one just because this side was splashy. And it's funny because the rest of the plant, look at this vine, this is branching. I guess it's a mix, but still like pretty good splash, I think. So we're just gonna chop all the way down. Can we just cooperate? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now looking at any other tendrils that need to be supported. Isn't it, see, isn't this weird? Look, right over here, pretty much all green. Look at the next set or the one leaf here. It is silver. And then the leaves before that were just all silver. So fascinating. So that's why I'm always like, wait for like two, I mean, it's all up to you, but like, wait for another set of leaves in order to like make the best decision whether or not to cut it because the rest of the vine below that is silver. It was just like those two green ones over here. Again, I'm trying to clip without like suffocating. Also, okay, so I was shocked in the beginning when I saw this because like, ugh, it's not showing. They look a little purple, this new set, just because this is touching the grow light a little bit. <laughs> But I might, okay, there is a chance that I might cut this one off of this plant, propagate it down because you can see it is between green and splash. With this specific specimen, I wanna keep it as silver as possible. So depending what I see from my other splash, yes, I'm gonna show that one too and, and do the same thing pretty much. Depending what I see, I might make like a half splash planter. Um, so I'll leave that one for now and then we'll just continue with the training. Oh, look at this one. Are you kidding? This vine is new too. Uh, look, oh my gosh. You're coming off from something else. I think I said I want to like try my best, even though there's no supports in the middle. I think the Matilda will be fine. She will still push out growth with minimal support. So I might take this vine here and just kind of like slam it across. Is it gonna work? And like, yeah, I think I like that. I'm gonna do the same with this one which means I have to clip it to some vine. I literally, like, I don't, oh my God, no. Oh, well, that's gonna branch. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can see, but there's this like dead part. I don't know if it was like against the grow light. Uh, I don't really necessarily like think too hard about doing this because again, it'll branch somewhere else. And so I'm just, I'm just clipping it to like another vine. I'm just gonna cut this part though, cause she's not alive. Do you see how these two leaves are Okay, a test, okay, it's working. I don't know when it cut out. So I'm just gonna repeat this again. So it's interesting, do you see how this leaf, and even the leaf before that is silver, but all green, I'm gonna sneeze. But these leaves, although not hard enough, are green. Who oh, I'm gonna sneeze again. Okay, so this is 
the other one. So as you can see, it is pretty much half and half. Like it's not as splashy th as the other one. And so yeah, still beautiful though. I think she looks so good trailing. She really does. Okay, I need to, what is happening? Because I don't know if y'all saw, but this leaf, this leaf just fell and I don't know where it came from. So again, just feeling the leaves, everyone. Maybe I'll just, a okay, boom. Okay, feeling the leaves and everyone feels okay. I'm thinking it might have been just an older leaf because everyone feels super, super hydrated. I guess they're just older leaves because future Kevin zoom in. Do you see how these are like the old like mother leaves? Um, nothing has changed. Like I'm still giving it a lot of light, but if a vine is pushing out a lot of growth, sometimes it's, it does sacrifice the oldest leaf just to pull mobile nutrients from it. I'm just going to look for like fully fully green vines like i see this one here and it's like three consecutive sets let me try to show you better so you can see three consecutive pairs of green leaves you can see that in the mother vine it is one side silver one side green so i'm just gonna cut the entire vine off why are you so close and i mean i can leave it i really could but i just need to um, I do see a young branch here that's coming from this green leaf and this side is green I'm gonna cut it because I don't see any splash. So goodbye kind of looks fine and I'll just water since she is here Okay, so Hoya Crassipetilata you can see there is <laughs> So these ones in this planter, these were the ones that were already rooted. I'm just gonna put a clear trellis. Um, it's just shocking because these ones were the cuttings that didn't have any roots and they're definitely growing faster. So I think that's so fascinating. I almost find, and I always say this tip when it comes to Hoyas and really any other plant, if a Hoya is not doing well, there's a chance the root system that it already has is like not good. And so sometimes the best decision if you want a Hoya to grow fast is to take a propagation, root that one really well. Again, I used my same method by keeping the water level really high, but at this point, because she's already pushed out so many, I'm not keeping it as high, I'm only keeping it up to here, as opposed to up here. It's pretty evident with this one compared to this one because there's only one, the push out tendril. The other ones have like small growths, like that one over there, like this is the mother planter here, but there's so many more tendrils. Do you see that? Okay, so I just have this bin. This is how I keep a lot of my supplies in my, in my closet. I just have this bin of stuff, so clear trellises, moss poles, some planters and bins over here. So I think I'm out of small, so I think I might have to go with the medium. Is that good? I like that. If y'all are new here, before I planted these, I put two cake dowels in the planter just because in the future, and this is the future, I can just take trellis and just put them in like that. Boom, it's all done. And if people have questions about stability, like she is pretty stable, like look. So the only thing, and I mean, I guess I could like secure it somehow, but like you can easily just like take it out. But when the tendrils start growing, that's not gonna be an issue. So just taking these clips that again are just so perfect and just going like that, it's not too tight. And we're just gonna put one more. Eh, why don't we put a third one? Yes. Ma'am. Um, she clearly needed a lot of support because that's a lot of space between leaves. <laughs> I know, it's funny, I have, first of all, I think it's hilarious during my Hoya collection video that I forgot about my one in Lekka and I was just kind of focused on the full one in Pawn and so anyhow, I know I have full ones already. I, I still don't know what I'm gonna do with, with um, these ones. Oh, this is new. Sorry, I'm just distracted. I was just touching the whole plant. These are new. Uh, Oh, there's something about new leaves. Wow, okay. Looking at the other one, I know there's a lot of tendrils, but I don't know if they're long enough. So let me just get another one. And then the second one, like that. And it's perfect. Can you, re can you just repot it? Yes, I hate so much repotting plants, um, especially if it's something so dumb like putting a trellis because I don't want to disturb that root system. Plants need to feel just their roots need to hug on whatever, you know, substrate they're in. They need to hug, whether that's the actual substrate or like the edges of the pot. They kind of need like that permission. I don't know if that's the right word. 
to push out new growth at a rapid rate. So that's why I don't like doing it. Sometimes it slows it down a little bit, but I mean, you can do it. I mean, it's not gonna harm your plant. It's just gonna be slower afterwards. Cute, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just putting on the clips. This is a beautiful plant. I recommend this plant because it's so easy. It grows really fast. Oh my God, this is funny because I think <laughs> the ones that are long are on this side of the planter. And so I don't even think, I'm trying to clip the longest one and it's too far. Okay, I'll just wait a little bit. And then once it grows a little bit more, I'll do the same thing that I did up here. Isn't that exciting? Just incredible. Look at this plant. Oh. See, and this is why during my organization video, I was like, okay, prioritize larger spaces between shelves because obviously these Hoyas need to be under a grow light. We're going into winter. And I, I fully, like knew that this was gonna happen and that I was gonna put a trellis on both of these. And I don't need to stress about where I'm gonna put them. I know exactly where I'm gonna put them. They're gonna go with my Burley Marks flame props. Or here. See, there's so many spots. Okay, Hoya Chinkin is the pie. I, I've grown to really like this look. I don't know. I, I just like keep thinking there's a fungus net. I just keep, I just keep thinking, ah. Oh. It's just, a, it's so shallow that I have to like water this so often. Can you imagine a full planter? I think we're gonna do it. Future Kevin will thank you. Okay, I'm gonna grab my other bin. This is where I keep the majority of my self-watering pots. Again, it's in my closet. <laughs> These planters seem just fine. I have probably four more. So I'm going to put them in this one. I still have questions about these specific planters and um, the link. It changes so much on Amazon. Sometimes I have to buy from a totally different seller and the link isn't updated. And I just like never know. Um, but they look like this. So they have this uh, net pot, I guess. They have this cash po, And then they have this indicator here. So I am kind of hoping that these have rooted enough that the roots are like hugging onto the pond so the pond doesn't go anywhere. So I could just kind of like, kind of plop it just right on top. Okay, Kevin, think this very moment, do you, can you scoop it up like that? I think that's, 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 I don't, I don't think so. Nope, it's, <laughs> look how some already fell out. I'm just gonna have to do this the hard way one by one. Um, but look, a lot of these, even though they're still like young, look at those roots. So beautiful. I might also, cause you can see that the mother leaves just were so wet. Now that she has a vine, I'm gonna cut those leaves just because it's kind of difficult to now put them in. Cause I don't know if y'all remember, but remember it was so difficult to push all of them and have them all <laughs> root. So you know, we're just gonna Push them through a little bit. This, they look like small little trees. I'm just prioritizing the, the big ones that have pushed out a lot of growth first, just cause the root system's bigger. Okay. I think now that there's like a bunch clustered like this, I think I might, um, just put a little bit of pond because it's going to be very tricky to get inside there. Like put the pond inside that part. So I'm just grabbing. And also just for stability, obviously. And that's another reason why I cut a few of the mother leaves because they're kind of in the way. See, I can already tell this is going to be so difficult. I am going to have to keep an eye on these because although they have big root systems for like the size of cutting they are, it's still not like branched enough for me to be like, okay, I can like pop you under girl light and you'll root fine. I have to make sure it's the water level does stay pretty high just looking at this. I'm trying to like now just push them a little bit more. I'm always just scared to do that because sometimes you might damage the stem or the existing roots. All these have roots that are kind of like this. I feel bad. I'm not like showing any of them, but there's just so many <laughs> that I'm like, okay. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I know we're not done yet. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. I don't know why. I think it's like a small little like forest. Ooh, I like these roots. Look at that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Wow, Mama Roots. Look at this one. This one is, I think it's one of the longer ones. Okay, we'll put you in the corner. Okay, everyone. <laughs> so we put everything in. Um, I'm scared because it's, there were so many that didn't push out new growth. So I just assumed that there wasn't like a big root system, but there's some like, you can see here that <laughs> there is a big root system and I couldn't submerge it cause I already like put too much pawn. Still, I am gonna try to cover these. Oh my gosh, I even know. I'm just gonna try my best to just sprinkle the pod so they're not like covering the small tiny leaves. Oh geez. I really should have just had these ones and then stopped, but I was like, oh, there's so many that are rooted. And I did uh, keep the ones, can you see over there, future Kevin, zoom in. So these are all the casualties. So I don't know how many are like, didn't make it like eight maybe. 10, who knows? And I think I can link that to, again, the saucer being so narrow that I would often forget to water it and I wouldn't know that it'd be dry. And then rehydrating a dry stem, like super, super dry stem, when it has no roots, like that is gonna link to the rot. And so <laughs> I think we're okay here. I'm trying to look at this bunch. I feel like I'm looking for lice or something. I'm, I'm gonna water over top very slowly. And we're gonna fill it up pretty high like I was saying before. Just making sure the pond is wet at the surface because the roots weren't that large. Okay, I think we're high enough. So at this point, this indicator is irrelevant just because we're past the maximum. The maximum would be at the top of the legs of the net pot. That's when you would see the indicator reaching the maximum. We're well past it. Just remember where you put the lowest rooted cutting or propagation, sorry. And that is at this point. So I put the water level right over here just because there's so many cuttings up here where the roots are literally here so i think this is adorable don't you think so is it just me okay i'm gonna put this right under grow light we are not moving it this one can take a touch less light than other hoyas but because we shocked it oh my gosh i already see a root sticking out where are you coming from can you okay i'm not whatever if it doesn't make it it doesn't make it but look at this, so cute. Okay, moving on, I wanted to look at the Polyneura outer variegated and the Michele. So I propagated these plants a week ago and kept the water level really high. I mean, y'all saw that I spilt it a few times. I have not filled the reservoir. I usually don't need to fill up the reservoir in the first week unless my room stays really hot. It's been a little cooler this past week, less sunny days. So um, the water level, I'm just trying to be careful because y'all saw the last time. Um, the water level is still kind of high. Yeah, it is. So pending, I would fill up the reservoir back to the top and then the biggest thing is you gotta feel the leaves. You can't always trust appearance. Like, I mean, obviously it's evident if you know there's a yellow leaf, but you gotta, you gotta feel your leaves. It's how you familiarize yourself with 
if there is enough hydration in the leaf. This is important because if you feel a leaf is hydrated, it means that the substrate is wet enough because at this point there are zero roots. So the plant still absorbs water from like the place that you cut, but it's very, very slow. And there might be a chance that there's like a tiny, tiny root that has grown in the past week. And that's why they feel hydrated as well. I never panic with polyneuras because in my opinion, they root pretty easy. When I first got the broguette though, I had a situation where I had it propagated in a pond. They were so wrinkly. Like it was visually there too. Like you can see how wrinkly the leaves were. But then when I took it out, it had these tiny, tiny, tiny roots and it just wasn't enough to keep the whole leaf hydrated at that point. And so just going through everything and everything feels okay. At this point, I would then look if I felt something dehydrated and see how wrinkly it is and we're okay. Just because I don't predict that I'm gonna look at this plant for another week. So returning it back to, to to the to the very top of this so miss <laughs> miss mckelly so you can see this leaf when i looked at it she was actually touching the girl light when i say blast it with light i don't mean touch it <laughs> um so you can see that she is burnt and really that's okay with this plant specifically i did talk about how when you get over hydration when the roots are seeing the reservoir and then there's like a rapid uptake of water you see these spots and so oh gosh i should have like remembered i don't know if they had these spots and they feel hydrated so that's a good sign what i've seen with this plant when i see those spots there's usually a little bit of roots because the uptake of water, like you wouldn't get that if it was just taking up water from that place you cut, like there would be roots at this point. I'm tempted to like pull it out, but I just, it's only been a week. <laughs> yeah, okay, I pulled it out. Look, there are roots just all along the stem. Oh, they're so hard to see. That's probably why you get those dots. Because specifically if the plant or the leaf is on the more dehydrated side and then you subject it to like so much water, then you see this. So, okay. I'm glad I pulled it out. That's good. Probably going to break it now, putting it back in, but... <laughs> okay, water level. It's actually lower. So I'm just going to fill it up again. And again, feeling this leaf feels so, 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 so dehydrated. So for me, I like remember which leaf felt dehydrated. And then just the next time I check, seeing if it's yellow, seeing if it's more wrinkly and just assessing from there. Um, just every, all the other leaves feel okay in my opinion. Ooh, not this one. This one feels the same right over here to this one. So we'll see what happens. They are getting enough light just because they're right beside the burnt one. So the light's right here, right over those two leaves, uh, but we'll see. So that's basically what I would do at the one week mark. Not a lot, but at the same time, a lot. Like you just look at all these things because in my opinion, this stage is very, very critical. I was happy to see those tiny, tiny roots on that one cutting that I pulled out, even the polyneura. And yeah, I'll put her back with that leaf not touching the grow light. <laughs> My gosh, I just realized my fly was open and y'all didn't tell me. Y'all are not good friends. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, very sad news. My Hoya insularis, the one that was in Lekka, there were two plants in there. One of them rotted and it just, I couldn't save any of the cuttings. The second one was okay, but I think because I pulled the plant out and like disrupted the root system, she started to, to, to take a tumble for the worse. So I already threw the bottom part. The roots weren't terrible, but there was more like breakage and rotting. So I took these cuttings, but here's the thing. I took these cuttings off camera a week ago and she was already pretty dehydrated. So half of these are just like goners. I can already see yellowing right here. So, and even at the connection point here, it's not squishy, but like weak. And so I wouldn't even try, even though there is green at the top here, I wouldn't try rooting that, so goodbye. Situations like this where you have one leaf that's starting to yellow, but this one 
is okay. And again, this is why I always say like feel your plants at any stage and remember how they feel because I know that the insulars, when it's hydrated, it feels like this leaf. So because I know that, I think there's a high chance that she's gonna root okay. Oop, almost dropped. <laughs> Okay, so we got one good one. Same with, this one feels good. I think these ones were more weirdly thicker. And so they really held on to the moisture. I've seen that with like the Mathilde. I mean, the Mathilde is a champ, but the leaves for, of the Mathilde are more succulent. So they do hold on to more water. So they last longer. I found that also with the Glaybrush Selector. These ones look wrinkly, but they feel good. These ones over here, they feel really good. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> the yellowing is not a good sign we're gonna say goodbye Ooh, see this one's so squishy over here do you see how at the top part it's yellow it's only one leaf i could like pull it off okay it's not coming off but it's just based on what i'm feeling i'm not gonna keep it Ooh, this one's on the edge i'll keep it we'll, we'll try this one looks and feels okay this one too okay there's actually more i think three did i throw three away i think it was three Ooh, okay i'll keep this one over here oh <laughs> this next one i was feeling and then the leaf just came off so easily it's not like i forced it off however the leaf on the other side feels good it's not coming off like the other one we'll try i think we're gonna trail I think we're going to trail in pond. Oh yeah, the one thing I forgot to mention, feel the stems. So it's trickier with the insulars because the stems are so skinny. Like they're skinnier than the leaves. And like overall they feel okay. Even though they've been sitting for a week in the darkness. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be so difficult. <laughs> Stay please. Stay please. Ooh, girl, I'm hungry, hungry. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of pond just to stabilize these ones, just because these are the longer stems. There are three more that have shorter stems, so I don't wanna bury them too much with the longer ones. So I'm just gonna add some pond. Then the rest. And again, just filling all the way up. So water at the top and right under a grow light. Hoya Hanye yellow. It's just gonna have to wait. See, when they're in these cups, yeah, you can see root growth, but you can see how dry it is. I like, I can't keep these, these cuttings in, in cups because I tend to forget them. Um, I ran out of planters though. I didn't realize I only had one left. This one's gonna have to wait. Uh, until the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!